day four uh, of the first week, expressing regrets and hypothetical situations review. Hi, Karen, how are you? Hi, how are you? I'm good. Good, how was your day today? Uh, the same always, busy and busy and busy. But today was my last day because I'm just work from Monday to Friday. That's great. So tomorrow you get a chance to relax. Yes, on, on weekends, I just want to relax. What do you like to, to do? On... To, get, uh, to, get, to get energy to start uh, on Monday. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it is correct to say to get energy or what are other words that I can use? Usually there's an expression and the expression is to recharge, to recharge. Okay, or to uh, recharge to my recharge. battery. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what kind of things do you like to do on the weekends? Uh, you know, we still, we don't do too much on weekend because of the COVID. So you just stay at home? Just uh, watch TV. Yes, we stay at home. Okay, all right. Hey, good evening, Gladys. Good evening, Eric. Good evening, Edwin. How are you? How was your day? Well, um, I'm doing good. I'm working, but I'm doing good. Great, because I have in the class right now. All right. What time do you finish working, Eric? Until tomorrow. Oh, you're at work right now. You work 24 hours. Yeah, 24 or, or, or a little bit more. Eric, what do you do? Uh, I work at, in the, at, at SEPA. Ah, at, at the airport. Yes. Okay. Do you work with, uh, with SEPA or do you work with Aroman or with the... Uh, directly with SEPA? No, with SEPA. Okay. Yes, directly with SEPA. Okay. Mm. But it's no problem you receive the class is when you are at work. Not, yeah, not, not, not really because this is my uh, dinner time. Oof, imagine. Yeah, 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 but if it's your dinner time, you do what you want with your time. Yeah. Good <laughs> yeah, evening. Okay. Good evening. All right. Okay. How are you, Roxana? I'm fine. Thank you. Good. And you? I'm fine. Thank you. I'm doing good. Mm -hmm. This afternoon it was raining and it was a lot of traffic. Ah. This, this afternoon. Okay. I, I don't know if someone. I don't leave my what? house. I don't know. I I I I, I don't go out no, of my really? house. Yeah. I may sometimes I have lucky. Weeks, I have weeks that I don't leave. Only when I necessary the supermarket or something. Normally I stay home. Great. Mm -hmm. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Okay. Well, I'm glad to see we have many people here. We have several. I know it's more difficult because it's Friday and not not everybody can connect and they have other things. Okay. Um, today we're going to be starting with a little bit of the review from yesterday, which was the hypothetical situations and the regret. Okay. Do you guys remember those, uh, how to express regrets? We have to use the auxiliary should, then the verb have, then the past participle verb. Well, and the whole structure is we have to the subject first, then should, then have, 
uh, and the past participle. Correct, correct. So we have two forms for regrets. We have the positive and the negative, just like anything. And we have, I should have, like Eric mentioned, which is expressing a regret, or is I shouldn't have. Now, it's not the, the negative is with the should, is not with the have, okay? Because should is the one that expressed the regret, okay? This is what you're giving your opinion. So you're going to use it with should. And as Eric mentioned, we need the past participle. That's the key. That's the key for expressing a regret in the past, okay? So I should have, as an example, I, I should have studied for the exam. Ah, I, it's something I regret. And now when you express the hypothetical situation is the second part. If I had studied for the exam, I would have passed. Okay. That's where we have the, that's why we, they, most of the time when you learn for regrets, you also learn hypothetical situations because it's very common. If you regret something, you think not only, ah, this is bad, but you think this is bad and this would have happened or this would have been different if I did this. So that's why we always, we normally learn about the regrets along with the hypothetical situation. Okay. So as an example today, Maria, what time did you wake up? I woke up 5.50. 5.50, huh. Maria, what happens if you wake up at 10 o'clock today? Well, I, I, I will be so concerned and in a hurry because I have classes. Okay. It, the, today, I didn't have class, but I had a, a meeting with, okay. uh, with another teacher. So okay. that would be embarrassing for me if I said, oh, I'm so sorry, I just woke up. <laughs> okay. And that's exactly the hypothetical situation is different than the regret, right? But because regret is something that she did that she wants to change. Hypothetical is something that she's thinking what would, what would have happened. So in the case of Maria, if we put the situation, if I had woken up at 10 o'clock, and then the consequence, I would have been embarrassed, I would have been late, I would have, uh, I would have been worried, whatever Maria thinks is the, the appropriate action. But the first one is in this situation, there is no regret. It's only hypothetical. I mention it so that we understand the difference. Yes, many times when we have regrets, we use hypothetical, but it's not that it's always a combination. Sometimes it's only you imagine. You only use your imagination. Ah, what if, what if, okay, all right. Marcela, you look different today. I, don't, I think it says Marcela Beatriz Lopez, but it doesn't look like Marcela Beatriz Lopez. <laughs> Do you have? Sister. I don't know. <laughs> but I think they don't realize because they are on the computer and continue without looking. Okay. Can you hear me, Marcela Beatriz Lopez? Okay, they're fixing the problem. All right, must be something with, with the audio. Okay. Hey, all right. So we're gonna take a look at our screen I see is great that some people are, okay. Let me share the screen with you. Okay. So here we have the idea that we're looking at is what I just mentioned, reviewing the expressing regrets and describing hypothetical situations. Here we have three people that have made sentences, okay, and can somebody please read those sentences? Uh, well, expressing regret in hypothetical situations. I shouldn't have run so much yesterday at the stadium. 
I should have uh, taken something special for my mom's present. If I hadn't waited too much, I wouldn't have missed Mary. Okay. Hypothetical situation. Only if that I one. Have, if Eric? I had saved money last. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much, Eric. Only the first one. Let's look at the first one. Okay. In the first one, we have several, several sentences. Do you see that? There are many of them, right? Now, are there any sentences or any part that are not correct for you? Take a look. For this is not only for Eric. This is for everyone. Are there any in the in the in the first one? Are there any sentences or any parts that you feel are not correct? Maybe the spelling or some word. Okay, which word in first? The second sentence. Mm -hmm. And for me, the first sentence is correct. Okay. The first one, mm -hmm. I shouldn't have run so so much yesterday at the study. For me, that one is correct. Okay. <laughs> and, run, yeah. And what is the problem yeah. in the second sentence for you? What do you think is the mistake in the second? Um, I don't really understand um, because in the second one, I should have taken maybe a, something special for my mom. Uh, maybe it's the verb because maybe it sounds better. I should have bought something special for my mom. I don't know. No, <laughs> I no, don't know what. Don't, <laughs> no, don't worry. That's why, that's why we're here. That's why we're here to, to, I, to try to understand each other and to see where correct or not correct. This is the best way. The best uh, way is by identifying. Go ahead. Yes. Teacher, uh, maybe I shouldn't have drawn so much yesterday at the stadium. Because I I have I have taken something special. For, uh, the I should have maybe this uh, another uh, there are another verb another auxiliary for for the second sentence uh, the reason uh huh correct okay maybe uh, is is one one um. Sentence. Ah, okay, okay, all right. Uh, uh, no, I don't. I, I decided because uh, I have to buy something special from my mother, but I, I, I don't know. No, don't worry. The, the idea is the order, give the your order, opinion. Give your opinion. Mm -hmm. I understand order, that the, there is three sentences, right? Correct. Uh -huh. There are three sentences. Three sentences. Mm -hmm. The three ones doesn't have to be related with each other. Mm -hmm. It's three sentences. Yeah, because right. the platforms uh, made the sentence like that. Maybe you type your sentence in another line, mm -hmm. but the platform uh, give you the sentence like they are just uh, one sentence. Correct. So mm -hmm. the first one, it doesn't have to be related with the second one and neither the third one right that's I'm right that's right about it if i'm curious about if the first one is missing the consequences or, or the reason why I shouldn't have run okay very i shouldn't have run so much but why it didn't say why okay and very very important that you mentioned this it's okay it's true mm -hmm. Okay, so all of them, we are looking at different things. If we look at the title, it says expressing regret and hypothetical situations. When you express regret is not necessary the consequence. It's only your regret. Okay, so um, for example, uh, I, I, in this case, I shouldn't have run so much yesterday at the stadium. The, 
you can ask the person or the person can uh, can answer or the person can give uh, more information but it's not necessary mm -hmm. only we know that the person has this regret but in the last sentence where it's a hypothetical situation that's where we have to be clear so the sentence number one and sentence number two are okay but in sentence number two it's probably better if change the verb taken for bought as an example but it's correct grammatically and it's correct the structure for one and two number three is not so correct because the last part of the sentence we are missing the complement the first part is correct if i hadn't waited too much that's correct then i wouldn't have missed okay the part that is missing is i think the instead of having i think the person put the name i think they're trying to say the name of the person right mary mary for uh, uh maybe like andrea or um uh, or michelle or something like this mm -hmm. okay and if this is the idea is is correct or maybe the person wanted to put the n and for many then it's another problem so i think this one is is okay the way that they are only we need to make sure because you know that in the platform, if you don't have the capital letter or the period, ah, it's, it's a mistake. So this is the only one for, for that point, okay? But it's good, the other ones are good. Let's look at the second sentence, the hypothetical situations. Here, if I had saved money last year, I could have traveled this summer, okay? This is one sentence. The next sentence, if I had learned English before, I would have communicated better with foreign people. What do you think? Are the two sentences correct? Are they wrong? Is the spelling in, incorrect? What are there no mistakes? What what is your opinion? There are good. <laughs> they are correct. Okay, great. Yes, okay. They are correct. Okay, Roxana also thinks they are correct. Anybody else? Yes, they are correct. Okay. okay, good. Everything is very good about the sentence. They are well structured. They use the commas because many times we forget the commas, but they use the commas correctly. The only letter, in, and it's only one letter, the only letter that is incorrect is the letter English because English needs to have a capital letter, but the others are correct. Okay, and then we have the last sentence. The last sentence is, if I had saved money last year, I could have traveled this year. Okay, that's one. And if I had learned English before, I could have worked in a bilingual school. Okay. What do you think? Are both of these sentences correct? It's missing the period at the end. The, okay, the period. in the second sentence, we're missing a period. Good, that's a good grammar structure, or a good punctuation, sorry, good yeah. punctuation. Mm -hmm. And the, and the comma. Okay. And the comma in the second sentence. Okay, Roxana. For you, Roxana, where is the comma in the second sentence? Where is the correct place to put the comma? After before. Very good. Exactly. It is after before. Right. Because it's your statement, comma, the consequence. Is this okay for um, for everybody to understand and to help you remember how to express regret in hypothetical situations? Yes. Yes? Okay, good. As you can see, there are two differences. Remember, the idea is that with regrets, it's only the should or the shouldn't, okay? But when you're expressing a hypothetical, it's using if. Okay, that's the important. So here, hypothetical, here, hypothetical. The first sentence is the one that has both of them, has regrets, I shouldn't have, a regret in negative, I should have, a regret in positive, and it has the hypothetical, okay? So it's easier to see all of the examples. Okay, now let me see, I had a couple of people Oh, okay, no problem, no problem, Marcin. Good. All right. Uh, 
now we're having a couple other people. Hey, we have a couple more. Not as big as yesterday, but we have quite a few people. All right. Is there anybody that st is still not clear how to express regret or how to make hypothetical situations? Or do you feel confident? It's okay. Uh, the subject is understandable. Maybe just we have to get used to with uh, the structure. Okay. Practice them. Pra practice, is, practice it more. I think. Good, yes. And, and that's why it's good that when you try to go for, when you practice the knowledge checks. Remember that in, just to be clear, this is only the structure for regrets in the past. This is only the structure for hypotheticals in the past. This is not the structure for hypotheticals in the present or in the future. This is only for the past. Okay. okay. In, the, in the present, in the future, it's a little different. It's, it's, it's the same, I should, I shouldn't, okay. But the auxiliaries change. Just like in the present, past, or future, the auxiliaries change. But the rest of the structure is the same. But right now, I'm glad that everybody understood those. Okay. Now we're going to take a look and we're going to, the other exercises that are for unit one are really for you to do. Okay. I'm going to share just one more time to be sure so that everybody is clear. But from 1.9, this is the one that we just saw, that we just expressed. But the other activities, the 1.10 is a knowledge check that you need to complete using this, okay? And is what we just talked about. You need to read the statement, you need to put in the correct order, okay? Rearrange the regret or hypothetical situation. Okay? If you have difficulty or problems, you can ask and we'll check and we'll help you work on this. But this is the activity for you. In 1.11, it's really about a pronunciation. And this is the form of have been have and been. It's just that sometimes when it's contracted is, or when the people say it quickly, it sounds different, okay? It's like I've, I've been, I've been, okay? Instead of I have been, you hear like in one word, I've been. That's the idea for the pronunciation. If you would like to take a look at it, I recommend you look at it, watch the video, and then you have the opportunity to write here on the bottom, okay? I should have been, which is expressing the regret. Okay, the next exercise, the 1.12, is again for you to practice more, for you to practice your listening. Please, if you need, I recommend this strategy. You listen one time and you answer the questions. Okay, all, you listen the first time and you answer all of them. Then you listen again even if you are correct, even if you understood, but you listen again the second time and you check or you confirm your answers. So the first time is for your, what your idea is. The second one is you are listening to check. And then when you feel secure with your answers, then you can go ahead and submit, okay? So one more time, you listen, choose the answer, then listen again and make sure that that is the answer that you want. Are there any questions for that? No. No? Okay, great. Then we can, well, sorry, I, I know only one person said no, but anybody else? Are there any questions? Teacher, um, I, did, I did the exercise um, in the order. Yes. But, but uh, in the first, uh, let me in there. no another back okay in that same section the 1.12 the listening and knowledge yes in 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 the in the one we just did in this listening exercise ah. in, no 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 we in okay no in the previous the previous the knowledge check here yes. in this one take a look uh -huh. oh, yes okay uh, i i i have uh, a question uh i i i ordered um, this one 
if I listened to my parents, I would may have made have made a more pragmatic decisions. Or okay. no, in, in this form, I I did it, but a check right right bad bad uh, check. It, it it marked incorrect. Correct. Okay, let's try. Mm -hmm. Let's do it together right now. You said mm -hmm. I would have mm -hmm. have made. Okay, made. A, have made a more pragmatic decisions. Uh, this, uh, yes, pragmatic decisions. Okay. Okay. Let's check in this moment. Let's see if there is a mistake or if something happened when you spelled it. Uh -huh. Look, the uh -huh. mistake is when you wrote it uh -huh. because I wrote exactly your answer that you told me in this moment and it's correct. Okay. So maybe when yeah. you, uh, when you write word. it, maybe mm -hmm. sometimes. Maybe it's about the point yes. because sometimes the platform, when you put points at the end, mm -hmm. doesn't take you oh. like but it's a mistake of the platform oh, okay so if you put a point at the end uh -huh. in your sentence maybe it turns bad correct but sometimes it sometimes wrong. it's also it's also about the space between words i okay. made that mistake so many times because i was not paying that attention and i clicked twice on the on the space bar and then the double okay. space Mark uh, wrong, Mark okay. wrong, but, but it, it was thank fine. You. Okay, thank you. Of, you. of course, of course. The important is that we we identified the difference between a technical error and an understanding error because technical errors happen mm -hmm. all the times. This is the space. This is the period. This is the, the that's mm -hmm. the technical error. But sometimes okay. it's a comprehension error. Your comprehension is good because your answer is correct. So it's only something technical mm -hmm. that you have. Okay. 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 Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else have a question or comment? Okay, great. As you can see, today we're going to be looking at describing purpose. There are two ways to describe purpose. We can describe purpose using four or we can describe purpose using two. When we describe purpose with four, we're explaining it, okay? The same as two. Let me show you a little bit. Hang on. I want to make sure, okay, that you can hear the audio. Can everybody still hear me? Yes. Yes. Yes, teacher. Yes. yes. Hang on. Let me try. One more time. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Now, I hope you can hear the video so we can have the introduction of the video for how to express these. Describe purpose using infinitive clauses. Describing purpose. Hi. For you to be fluent in English, you need to keep up with all the lessons. So stay and learn how to describe purpose using infinitive clauses. Describing purpose. Infinitive clauses. To run a popular internet cafe, it's a good idea to have late opening hours. To establish a trendy restaurant, it's important to have fashionable servers. In order to establish a trendy restaurant, it's important to have fashionable servers. Infinitive clauses with four. For an athletic center to be profitable, it needs to have modern exercise equipment. For a shopping mall to succeed, it has to have a convenient location. In order for a shopping mall to succeed, it has to have a convenient location. Okay. Let's pause right there so that we can understand. So we have two forms of how to express the reason for something. This is the idea of describing purpose. 
we can express it with two or we can express it with four. But both of them are expressed why something happens, okay? So to do this, what do you need? Or for this, what do you need? What's the difference? Well, the big difference between using two and four has to do with the following word. Two is used with verbs. Two is used with verbs. Four are used with nouns, okay? So if we look at the two infinitive clauses, infinitive clauses with four, both of them are used, but two is with the verb and four is with a noun. For a center, for a shopping mall, for a restaurant, okay, for the things. But two is for the action. To run, to establish, to work. Okay. Is that okay for everybody? Are there any questions? The difference between four and two in describing the purpose? Is clear. Maybe it depends. I have a doubt about the depends. It has to be in infinitive, right? It has to be in the present tense. That's correct. And uh, in the case of the infinity clause, which for, uh, I see the example that we use to see that. I'm not sure if that's, that is a past particle or is present. Uh, no, the same, present, the same present. To and the verb in present. To have, to, to be, to need, but in present. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, let's mall to succeed. It has to have a convenient location. To describe purpose, we may do so by using different types of infinitive clauses. We may use the infinitive clause to plus verb. For example, to succeed in business, you have to. Notice we began our sentence using to, followed by the verb succeed. Or we may use in order plus infinitive. Example, in order to succeed in business, you have to. We may add in order, but it's optional. If we omit it, the structure stays the same. The other way to describe purpose is by using infinitive clause with for. For plus noun plus infinitive. For a business to succeed, it has to. Or in order plus for plus noun plus infinitive. In order for a business to succeed, it has to. Again, we may use in order, but it is optional. The structure stays the same if we omit it. Okay. So the important about that video and about the understanding is that you have two things. We can use the word for or we can use the word to. When we use to, we're going to use it with a verb. When we use for, we're going to use it with a noun. The function is the same. And what is the function? Is to describe why something happens. Okay. As an example, um, Heidi, why are you studying English? Hello. Hello, Heidi. Hello. Hello. Do, do, you, do you repeat the question? Of course, Heidi. I said, why are you studying English? Um, I'm studying English because I need to know more and, and for practice for, for my job. Okay. And I like that. Okay. Now, Heidi, use the structure correctly. Okay. She said, for my job. Because oh it's God. for and the idea, okay? Yes. She's, it's to learn more. Now, this is normally what you have been taught, that to explain something, you use because, right? And this is the normal. Be why do you study English? Because I want a better position, because I want more money, because. But it's not necessary only because. We can use this structure of infinitives, okay? To get a better job, I need English, okay? 
for my position, for my job, I need to study English. So we use these different structures so that we can express ourselves better and not only because, because, because. We can say to do something, okay? Remember, to, we're going to use it with what words? We're going to use them with? With verbs. Excellent, very good, okay, with verbs. And for, we're going to use them for? Nouns. With no. nouns. But both of them express the same as because. What is that? That is the purpose, the reason why you do something. That's the idea, that's the concept. In this moment, we're going to make small groups and we're going to express ourselves on why we do different things. As an example, I'm going to say, um, I know, I know, as an example, I know that Eric works at SEPA, okay? So I'm going to ask Eric, Eric, why do you work at SEPA? Ah, normally, the first thing that Eric imagined is to answer with because. Because I, no, 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 no. We stop. We are not practicing because. You know because. We are practicing the new structures. Two and four. If you need a moment to think for your answer, take a moment. But is the same concept as because, only we want to practice expanding our vocabulary and our ability to be more expressive. Okay? I say, Roxana, I know Roxana's flowers are fake. I know because I asked. Okay. But I can ask her now, Roxana, why do you have fake flowers? And Roxana, the first reaction for Roxana, because I what? No, 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 no. Stop. No, because you are going to express the purpose or the reason with two or four. It's your decision, but no, because. And the partner, if you hear the person say, because, say, no, 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 because. That way you stop the person. Okay? Okay. All right. Okay. Any questions? What are we going to do in our groups? Do we, do you need an example? Yes. Uh, yeah. Excellent. Okay. Morena, can you please ask Rosana a question of why? Okay. Uh, Roxana, why are you working uh, in your home? Hmm, easy question. Hmm, good friend. You see? Okay, excellent. Nice job, Roxana. Make Roxana work. Make Roxana think. Okay, good. Okay. I have to use four, right? Yes, but... I want you to understand is the okay. same concept as because the oh, same okay. answer that you have with because but only change with to and the verb or with for and a noun and then the same explanation okay for have for a noun or to and oh. the verb to and the verb mm -hmm. to make my life better exactly that's it you see to make my life better okay now this is a phrase if Roxana, we understand her answer but if Roxana wants to give a complete sentence we she can say okay to make my life better I work from home I avoid contact with other people or I avoid contact with other people to make my life better you see, we can change the order, but the purpose is the same. One more example. Roxana, please ask Morena a question with why. Morena, why are you so happy today, Morena? Ah. <laughs> You're happy today. I can tell. <laughs> I try. Actually, I try. Um, um, the same because remember is only we are changing your vocabulary only we are changing your vocabulary it's only changing because and we begin with two and your answer for the life is better when you are happy okay for life okay 
It's better when you are happy. Okay. All right. Exactly. The, and excellent, Morena. And the same thing. Morena can give any answer as long as she follows the structure. It's only, it's her reason. Okay. Morena can say to have a better life, to be happier for my family, for my health, for my mental uh, stability, whatever Morena wants. It's correct if she follows the structure of explaining why for plus noun or to plus verb. Okay. I, it's okay. Every, it's not easy. Don't worry. Don't worry. It's not you're going to do fast because you need to take a moment and change the idea that ah, is because, because. No, 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 no. Take a moment and change. Is the concept of because, but in two different forms. All right. I think everybody's okay, and now we just need practice, right? Teacher, a teacher, a question. Yes, Heidi. What may we 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 study today? Ah, thank you. I'm sorry. sorry. I, no, no, no. I'm sorry, Heidi. I thought I had said. I'm sorry. It is in this moment we are at two point one. Okay, two point one. And in the platform, 2.1 is the describing purpose. Mm -hmm. And 2.1 is the video that we saw that we just explained, but we are in this moment practicing the, we're using the video's information to put in practice. Any other questions? All right, let's go. Questions with why, remember, because that's the function of these questions with why. Claudia, Heidi, are you having problems entering? Okay, Claudia or Heidi, if you have difficulty, only write to me in the chat and I will try to help you. Yes. Claudia. Hi, Claudia. Yes. Hi, hi. Hi. Uh, why would you why would you buy a dog? To be happy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> fine, fine. Very good, Ernesto. Your answer is correct. Your structure is correct. Now try again, but in a complete sentence. Okay. Um, for uh, or to find a way to enjoy the life. To, to be fun, maybe. Okay. Okay. So we take what you said originally to be happy. And this, all you have to do is expand the reason. To be happy, I would buy a dog or change the order. Ah. I would buy a dog to be happy. And that's it. All you need to do is give the information of what you are happy for. And then this is the complete sentence. So, so it doesn't it, matter if the two or, or four is in the middle in the middle of the sentence. Exactly. At the, at the beginning. Correct. It doesn't matter. That's right, Eric. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. So you right. can Claudia, give, you can, mm -hmm. I have a, a question for you. Okay, okay. 
in what grade do you do you teach? This year I'm having from first to fifth grade because I am working as a, a science lab assistant. The years before I, I was the science teacher, but because I am already retired, so and, and I kept working a little bit more, so now I am assistant in science, in science lab. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now I ask you, um, why are you traveling from France? Why, why am I traveling? From to, France. To, uh, to have fun. <laughs> okay. It's a good answer. To the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> <laughs> to take a picture uh, with the Eiffel Tower behind. It brought the. You're muted. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for mm -hmm. nap. Maybe you can say for nap napping. is a noun, right? Yeah. Yeah. No. No, it's a verb. Uh, really. Nap like. Like napping. taking a nap, correct. It's taking a nap, mm -hmm. so it's you also... cannot say just nap. Yes, yes, you can say just nap, but nap is not a noun. Oh, really? Oh, then you cannot use it, Gladys. <laughs> Maybe, oh. but she can say to nap or to. I, I don't know what was that the, the answer, teacher, but it's so hard to answer a question with why using for uh, ask me a question because i ask gladys why she looks la happy today and, and she want to answer because she was take she takes a good sleep right okay okay yeah. But how can we answer with for? In this case, you cannot because it's because of an action that she's happy. This is the, the reason, it's for an activity. So it has to be with, with two. If her mm -hmm. reason is, as an example, um, I say, Marcela, why do you work two jobs? Why do you study so hard? And the reason is, her children or her family or something like this, then it's for. For my children, I work so much. Or for my mother, I, I, I make a big effort. So it has to do with the reason that you're giving. If you are giving a reason for an action, it's going to be two. If you are giving a reason with a noun, it's going to be four. Okay. Okay. So when you ask, for example, if you ask Gladys, Gladys, why do you travel to Europe? If it's for an action, to have fun is correct. But maybe it's not for an action. Maybe it's for business, ah, for my company's contract. Then we use for. So yes, it's hard, but it's only hard because normally we do things or we do things with actions, not for people or for things. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's that's why we find a little bit more difficult to use for. It. So, okay. teacher, when Thank you. when the when the answer is uh, uh, with an action or because an action, uh, it has to be in be with because. You, you use because, but in our situations for practice today, we use two. So you is the same concept, but we use two. Mm -hmm. If the, the good thing about because is for both. It's for verbs and nouns. But in the case of these, two is only for verbs and four is only for nouns. Okay. That's what makes it more difficult to learn because when you learn because, it's easy because you only have because and you never, never think of separating the reasons. You never think, oh, an action, oh, a person or a thing, no, okay. But with this, you have to think if it's an action, the reason is with two. If it's a noun, the reason is with four. So 
um, how do you cook a delicious food? Ah, if it's for food, ah, for a delicious food or for delicious food, you need to, ta, 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 you need to add oregano, you need to add parmesan. But this is because we're talking about the thing. So that's why, it, that's why I say that it's okay. If you need a moment to think, take the moment because it's with practice that you learn the difference for your explanation between four and two. This is more important when you are explaining many things because you don't want to be repetitive. You don't want to use because, 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 because. You want to use different styles. If it's only one question, ah, nobody pays attention or it doesn't matter. But if you have many questions where you're explaining something like in a presentation or how something works or how something functions like in a training, ah, then it's not good to use because, because every, every time you're going to explain. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is that okay, Marcia? I, I think, <laughs> yes. Okay. Marcela, why do you take a shower? Uh, to be clean. Exactly. That's it. So don't worry if it's four or two. Don't, don't try to make it with four. Only go with what's natural. And then when you practice eliminating because, you're going to feel more confident just using the natural form of explanations with two or four. Okay? Because you can, the same, if you think of four, maybe you have to think more. Ah, for a clean body, for a healthy life, for, you, you can use four. The only is that it's usually you have to think more of the reason because, like I said, naturally we give reasons for actions why we do actions not reasons for th for nouns mm -hmm. yeah okay, okay. so you are all right i'll let you guys practice more okay teacher <laughs> you do prefer prefer uh, pay and cook mm. fast food yes <laughs> yeah. I, I do it but but that's but, but not I not prefer I cook uh, to uh, to uh, because no. No, because no, exactly. Because no, 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 because no, no, because no, 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 because no, no, because no, 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 Ah, okay, good. Very good, Patricia. Mm -hmm. The word is not need because need is a verb. But the idea you want is for necessity. For necessity. necessity. Mm -hmm. Okay. But necessity. you are correct. This is the this is the idea. Good. Uh -huh. Good. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, You're welcome. I I think I I need more vocabulary. Or express my ideas is no problem the important is even with small vocabulary is only that the idea is only organizing the mm -hmm. words when you learn mm -hmm. to organize then even with small vocabulary you can express a lot yes i lost with the the page and in the platform uh -huh. in the platform uh, it's very difficult for me because I, I am right now I lost. I unchecked oh. the page two point one but but um is a video and and no more information. I uh -huh. I don't know, I, I lost. No problem, Heidi. I, I help you. I help you and Patri and can help also. The the main idea from the video or the main idea of today's class is how to express an explanation, how to express a reason. 
to express reason, normally we use because. I study English because I want a better job. I work because I need money. In today's class, we learn that we can express reason with two or with four. The difference is two is with the verbs and four are with the nouns. As an example, to have more money, I work. Okay, is the same for because, because I need more money or because I want more money. Okay. Now, with four, okay, uh, for my family to have a good life, I need to work because now the reason is my family, no an action. So and the is, page, is, and the page two two point two um, on the sample mm -hmm. in this page is correct that we study right now. Yes, that is correct. This is correct. The two point one is the video that we saw. Two point two is the activity you're going to do. But oh, right the now, knowledge. the knowledge check exactly. But in the this moment, check. we are practicing the oral, the oral one. Oh, what? The oral of 2.1. We are practicing 2 .1. exactly of using four and two. Mm -hmm. Okay, we are going to go back and then we're going to give a few more examples to make sure it's clear. And maybe in this moment, if it's not clear, you ask again, okay? Okay. Okay, let's Thank try. You. You're welcome. Okay, I, th I think most people are back. I think only missing a few more that are still in the group, but all right. I heard many of you practicing. I know. I know it's a little difficult to get used to with the new concept because we are accustomed to using the word because. So in this moment, are there any questions or anything that is not clear? because I would like a few examples, okay? So that we can discuss together as a group and make sure it's clear. Eric, can so, you? Can for, you? Ex for yes. example, mm -hmm. yes. No, no, go ahead, Eric. Example, okay, thank you. With the uh, infinitive and the uh, infinitive with four, so right after the two or four, you have to come the bear and then in, the, in, the, in an A. Or it could be possible that, that we have something in the middle of them. Okay. You are going to use for and the, the noun for whatever you, you are using. Uh, a, a friend, a company, whatever the noun is, right? Like as an example, um, for my family. Okay. And then you can have something in the middle. For my family, I, we, they, you can use other, a more specific information, but you need to have the to and the verb, okay? okay? So as an example, I think I gave one group, for my family, and then I say, for my family, I can go directly, to have a good life, I need okay. to work a lot. The same, okay. remember, we can change the order, okay? I need to work a lot. And we answer the same thing. Why? Ah, okay. I need to work a lot, okay, to have a good life for my family. Okay. Teacher, can uh, as an example, if I said um, for making my family uh, proud of me, that's incorrect. That's in, that's usually incorrect because the for is a noun, is not with a verb. So you would normally, the correct grammatical structure is to make 
my family proud? Well, maybe, or maybe it can be for make, no, for my family, I took this job in order to make them proud of me. That, like that. that is correct. That is correct. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. I recommend, remember today, this was in, we are already in unit two. So I recommend you watch the video if, again, if you need to in 2.1 and practice the knowledge check in 2.2. But the most important is complete unit one. Do not wait and wait and wait in the platform. This weekend, you should be complete with unit one, all of the knowledge checks and the activities. Okay? Okay. All right. On Monday, we have class. Remember, Monday, not Tuesday. We begin on Monday next week. Teacher, okay. a question. Yes, Heidi. We, we need complete the exercise all, all of lesson? All of lesson one. One. Of lesson one, that is correct. In, in, the, in the platform. Yes, that is correct. Okay. 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 Thanks. You're welcome. Have a good weekend. I see you on Monday. Okay. Oh Have my, a 9 p.m. Yes. This was fast. It's like flash. It was fast. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. See you. Bye. Bye. See you. Good night. 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 Thank you. <laughs>